Hello everyone, I'm Ishwari. I'm very happy to do this Q&A session with Dr. Watts. Dr. Watts is a pediatric emergency medicine attending in Chicago. So in this video, you will be able to get the answers to all the most common misconceptions and questions that IMGs have with respect to USMLE scores, research, clinical experience, residency, as well as the match. Hello, Dr. Watts. It's really nice to meet you. How have you been? Hello. I've been wonderful. Thank you. It's so nice meeting and speaking with you also. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It really of course. means a lot to all of us. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'd sent in like a lot um, saying that I'm doing this with you and I got in a lot of questions on Instagram and on Facebook and on all those platforms and they want me to uh, convey like a lot of questions to you. So if that's sure. okay, I hope you don't mind. No, I'd be more than happy to. All right. So I think we can begin with talking about step two CS and then go yes. with talking about residency application, about the pass fail, and ultimately to uh, clinical rotations and telemedicine. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's begin. So I want to ask you how exactly will the whole match process be like this year? So we are still anticipating that the match, the, the final part of the match will, will proceed as it does or as it has in previous years. Uh, probably the biggest changes, of course, will be the interviewing process in that all of the interviews will take place virtually. In terms of, uh, uh, and also in terms of the application season, the application season, of course, it has opened uh, as of June 23rd. Candidates have been available or enabled to access um, my eras on on uh, and, and start their application and start to work on their application. However, the uh, time for programs to to look at the applications has been moved uh, to October uh, October 15th. So. Uh, so the biggest change is definitely definitely going to be the virtual interview, and uh, typically pro programs will give virtual tours. So a lot of the information that you would gather about the program, at least physically, on an interview, will still be provided. Uh, probably one of the biggest changes and in, in, in challenges uh, that the candidates will encounter is just being able to get the feel of each program that may be difficult to, to assess over uh, virtual interviews. Mm -hmm. And do you think this could be an advantage to students or do you think it's just like a kind of like a drawback? Well, it certainly can be an advantage in a number of ways. Uh, it should decrease cost, right? Uh, in that students don't have to do as much flying or, or any flying and and hotel stays so in that way and that's possibly monies that they could use to apply to more programs and so in that way it's definitely an advantage also i think for students who sometimes the interviewing process can be very um intimidating uh, when you're in the room with other other candidates. Uh, everyone, of course, talks about their experiences and, and you're often comparing yourself. And then the familiarity with the program, if, if some of the candidates have had opportunities to rotate at that location and others have not, that might make the candidate uh, who who did not get to rotate or have any experience at that location, at that hospital, it may make them feel intimidated. So at least it will, it will take away some of that, the negative aspects of that group dynamic. Um, of course, the cons uh, associated with it is, again, not really getting to get a true uh, visceral sense of the program and of the residents. I'm sure the opportunity to meet the residents virtually will be presented as it often is. A lot of programs may do a night before in-person uh, meet and greet in the previous you know, non-COVID years, and that was really a good opportunity to 
talk to the current residents in the program to really kind of get their their uh, true feelings with um you know with them out of the environment and their hair down and relaxed a bit mm-hmm. but uh so so i think that might be a, a bit of an unfortunate um disadvantage uh or change in the program uh, or in the application process this year uh, i see so and about cs since we cannot take cs anymore do you recommend applicants to take exams like the toefl or even step three well so step three definitely and i i would i would recommend that even in non-covid times that uh img is having step three it's it's just an advantage from a completion standpoint. Not all programs, but a number of programs are requiring step three passage for their PGY twos to progress to the PGY three year. And so of course that is that that is not a concern for uh candidates who come in already having passed step three. The TOEFL, I think that could be helpful. Uh, somewhat. I, I don't think there is any disadvantage uh, for having some additional support uh, in, in at least clarifying the, the mastery of the English language. However, CS, of course, assesses so much more in terms of physical exam skills and patient communication. So I I would definitely I would if if I had to choose between the two I would highly suggest that candidates complete step three, uh, and TOEFL, sure. But if you if if a candidate chose not to do TOEFL, I don't think that would necessarily stand in their way. All right, all right, that's fine. Uh, there are students who've taken step two CS before this and have yes. not passed that time. Do you think that could be a red flag right now because they don't have another chance of taking it if they're applying to the match this year? Um, how do you think program directors look at that? So, uh, so a fail is a fail, right? So a fail is a fail whether it is your first CS and you passed your second CS or whether it's a fail on your first CS and you just didn't get a chance to take uh, CS. So I don't think that it is an additional disadvantage since CS is not available. Those programs that will filter out candidates uh, just due to having a fail status are going, that, that would be the case whether this candidate took a second CS and passed or not. So I don't think it's an increased disadvantage, but there are definitely going to be programs um, who would not consider that candidate just because they have a fail, regardless of their subsequent performance. All right. 